Each year, migratory shorebirds embark on arduous journeys between their wintering and breeding grounds for breeding success. From July to August, shorebirds depart from their breeding grounds and head south to avoid the upcoming harsh winters brewing in the north. From March to early May, they start their migration north, heading back to their breeding grounds as the winter frost melts. They reach around late May to early June when summer begins at the breeding grounds. Shorebirds cover thousands of kilometers in their annual journeys, often taking the same route year after year along a flyway. They make stopovers on their journey to rest and feed. Wetland habitats in Singapore provide rich feeding grounds for some of the shorebirds to refuel. Situated between the East Asian Australasian Flyway and Central Asian Flyway, Singapore is an important site for wintering shorebirds. You'll probably be familiar with the sight of huge flocks of birds landing on these few spots around Singapore. In Singapore, the most important wetland site for migratory shorebirds is Sungai Bolo Wetland Reserve. 265 species of birds, including 39 migratory shorebirds, have been recorded here to date. From 1990 to 2020, approximately more than 12,000 birds of 143 species have been ringed in the reserve, displaying the vast biodiversity present. Due to its importance, Sungai Bolo was thus nominated to the EAAF Flyway Site Network in 2002. Sungai Bolo Wetland Reserve is a high tide roost site for migratory shorebirds. During low tides, most of the birds feed at a nearby Mandai mudflat. Hence, to ensure the conservation of these shorebirds, Mandai mangrove and mudflat has been designated as a nature park since 2018. During a recent satellite tracking study conducted by a research team from the National Parks Board, consisting of staff from Sungai Bolo Wetland Reserve and Pulau Ubin. They analysed the migration routes of medium to large shorebirds commonly wintering in Singapore. A total of 20 birds of 5 species of shorebirds have been tagged during the study from 2017 to 2020. The specific paths may vary depending on their response to poor weather, loss of habitat and food resources. Before jumping into the pathways taken by these shorebirds, let's find out a little more about each species. First up, we have the Wimbrows. They are known for their long downward curved bill, brown plumage and large body size. You can also identify them from the unique black stroke across their eyes that looks like a black eyeliner. Although most wimbers undertake northward and southward migrations through the Yellow Sea along the EAAF as seen from the other tagged wimbrows, the wimbrow E8, tagged in Sungai Bolo, undertook a different route through the Central Asian Flyway. During its northward migration in 2018, the bird departed Singapore on 26 April and took a stop in Myanmar before taking a direct Himalayan crossing after which, it passed through the Qinghai Tibet Plateau in West China and eventually landed at its breeding ground in north-central Russia on 21st June. After the breeding season, E8 started its southward migration on 15 August, where it took a relatively similar pathway back. It eventually ended up back in Singapore on 14 December, where it rested in Mandai Mudflat and Sungai Bolo. In total, this wimbrow travelled approximately 16,600 kilometres. The journey of wimbrow E8 was monitored till 2021 and the satellite tracking has shown that it has taken a similar route over the years. Next up, we have the Pacific Golden Clover. They are known for their beautiful golden and black speckled back as well as their short neck and bill. In 2018, the Golden Plover F3, tagged in Sungai Bolo, headed towards its breeding ground on 2nd April by first flying to Vietnam, then China, before landing in northern Russia on 28th May. It travelled a total of 8,700 kilometres during the northward migration. The bird was later observed at Sungai Bolo during the wintering season 
suggesting that the tracker may have been misplaced at the breeding site. Next on the list is the grey plover. The breeding plumage for these species looks very similar to the Pacific golden plover. However, the grey plover is slightly larger, and the golden speckles usually found on the backs of golden plovers are absent on the grey plover. The grey plover bee tree tagged in Chik Jawa Polaubin began its migration on 29th April 2018, where it passed through China and headed to its breeding ground in northern Russia on 15 June. Its southward migration was slightly different. The plover took a westward migration after leaving its breeding ground on 25th August before diverting back to its original path along the coast of China. It ended up in Chek Jawa and Pulau Tekong in Singapore on 16 October, travelling a total of 20,200 kilometres. The common green shank is another common shorebird that is frequently observed in Singapore. They are known for their white belly, greenish legs, greyish plumage, and slightly upturned bill. The green shank B7 tagged in Sungai Bolo started its migration journey on 23rd April 2018, making a few rest stops in China before it reached its breeding ground in the Russian Far East on 18 May. It headed back south on 4th August, reaching its wintering ground in Mandai Mud Flat in Singapore on 6 December. It travelled a total of 14,400 kilometres. The bird continued migration with the similar migration routes until the satellite signal was lost at its breeding grounds in 2021. And last but not least, we have the common red shank, known for their brown plumage and bright red legs. This makes them easy to spot, even from a distance away. The common red shank A00 tagged in Sungai Bolo departed from Singapore on 16 April 2018, reaching its breeding ground on 19 May. Unlike the other shorebirds previously mentioned, the common red shank did not migrate through the Yellow Sea, but rather followed a western route through Myanmar to breed at the Qinghai Tibet Plateau. It headed back south on 21st August, reaching Sungai Bolo on 2nd November, covering a total of 8,800 kilometers. Now that we know a little more about the migration route of these five species of shorebirds, let's take a look at all the birds that have been tagged from 2018 to 2020. Isn't the migratory journey of the shorebirds amazing? By conserving wetland habitats such as mangroves, mudflats and freshwater marshes in Singapore, we can provide migratory shorebirds with suitable and undisturbed feeding and roosting sites during their stopovers and winters here. If you would like to join us in our efforts to protect these birds, here's what you can do to help. If you spot any of these shorebirds or birds with flags during your visit, you can report your sightings online on the Singapore Engrave Flag Sightings Facebook page by scanning this QR code.